We've got news and a report today. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about Dragon Quest V and some very interesting events that will be coming up along with a potential to choose which S unit you would like to have. Stay tuned. So let's start with the news. In the beginning here, we've got a DQ5 event countdown campaign underway and a sneak peek. The sneak peek here is uh, basically just what I'm going to also kind of go through as well. There's going to be three different types of uh, brides available. Uh, they're all very interesting and uh, have their own uh, skills. There is going to be a mega boss battle, and I did not put this in the content, but I'm going to talk about it right now. This is a very, very fun event where we will be fighting a giant boss, uh, and we need to avoid the range attacks, deal damage when time's right, and win the battle. Uh, each time that you win, you will earn some pretty cool rewards. Uh, so you just keep challenging him until you beat him. Uh, basically, uh, you're going to send out units that are very high in attack and just try to whittle them down as quickly as possible. Uh, so, in order to challenge him, though, you will need a unique item that's available in this event, and then you will be able to go through it again. Uh, basically, it is a um, battle that will just carry over many, many times, and this item is a uh, kind of like a continue for the battle. His HP will keep on being reduced until you get rid of it, and uh, there are times where he has a weakness where you'll be able to do critical hits for that as well. Um, and really what you're going to do is you're going to be sending up units that are very high attack, very high movement, and just try to whittle them down as quickly as possible. Uh, he has a very strong attack that will uh, eliminate you quickly after a certain amount of turns, so it's not like you can just out-tank him to do all the damage. Um, and though it should be doable by most people, it's just that uh, you'll have to keep farming for the required item in order to keep on doing this. Uh, there's also this Talon Tower. Uh, I'm going to call it the uh, Babel Tower. That was what it was called in Japan. But the Talon Tower is uh, another type where you'll just be able to uh, farm units and also uh, gain some uh, materials along through it. Uh, this is a pretty fun and fairly easy event. There's just a lot that you can do. Uh, you'll be able to find Slime Knights uh, and other units that I will be talking through. The last bit here that I want to talk about with the news is the missions. And with these missions, we now have three new event missions for the next couple of days. Uh, and the goal is to clear the ability upgrade, equipment uh and rank up quest three times and it will get you a ticket and we've got a couple more times uh, that we will be able to do this so let's uh, go uh, get these done and the reason another reason to get these done and I'm going to claim them all now so that you can uh, so that I can uh, actually do that and yeah, screw it is in the adventure here we're also getting extra rewards for each and every one of those. So it is worthwhile to spend. Uh, and what's nice is, is they're giving us the ability to do any one of these three. Uh, generally, the equipment, you're only going to do the three to get the ticket. That's all. But if you are needing rank up or upgrade ability, this is the great time. Um, on Saturday... You'll be able to choose any of the rank ups, so I would just go ahead and crush that as much as possible. Then, with the upgrade ability, um, you can do on the other days as well. Today, I will probably spend a little bit of time on upgrade, but I need rank up uh, once again. Uh, and this is the time to go for the Iridus Irises. 
Uh, I ran out. I, I farmed like 40. I've spent them all. It's time for me once again to start farming some more up so that I will be able to upgrade more of my A and S classes from 5 to 6 or from 4 to 5 even. Alright, so that is all that I have for the news today. Now we are going to go and cover the DQ4 event. DQ5 event, even. Excuse me. Alright, so Bianca is our first one here. Um, she is a very interesting unit. She increases zap at physical power by 20%. Um, so she has the uh, ability to greatly increase the attack power of a unit. Her other two skills are zap physical damage. One of them is an AoE 3 that gives 240% zap physical damage that occasionally seals spells. The other one will uh, inflict... Uh, three damage of 94% zap. Uh, in all honesty, um, the Gale and Thunder is a better skill overall. The, this one does do a little bit more damage to one unit, but uh, the, with the three times, it if there's uh, anything that prevents damage or lowers damage, it does lower a great deal. So from an arena standpoint, you're going to stick with Gale and Thunder. For PvE, Lightning Strike is the better one. What's important about Bianca is, is her first awakening skill is movement plus one. Uh, get moves her from two to three. And for a physical unit, especially since she does have some range, uh, this does make her pretty nice. Uh, the only main issue is that uh, for arena, you're generally looking for a uh, range of six total, when I mean six, movement plus the range of the skills. Five, though, is still very, very good, but this is what makes Sorrow so great, is you can get him with six. Uh, the rest of it, her waking skills, uh, second one's first resistance, fourth is crackle, third and fifth is lightning, sky strike power. Uh, her sky strike is a huge AoE. Uh, very, very strong. Uh, I'll go more into details later this weekend. Uh, but right now, um, she is one of the two that I'm thinking about, but um, I've got enough zap. I'm not too interested in uh, zap physical right now. So let's uh, move on. Next one is Flora. Uh, this is a pretty interesting unit as well. Uh, she has, uh, her leadership is increasing bang spell power by 20%. Um, her first skill is actually a large heal. Uh, greatly recovers the HP of one unit. Uh, second one is Doe Storm. Is a huge MP consumption, but inflicts very large swoosh damage AoE. Occasionally will sleep as well. So she is a slightly more powerful. This is a more powerful version of the White King's swoosh spell, or cut swoosh, I should say, because it does the same damage, and it also sleeps. So it this is actually a pretty good skill to use for arena. The last one's Tenma Collapse. It's very similar to like the Dragon Lord skill. Randomly inflicts bang uh, spell damage to all enemies in the AOE. Very large. Does decent damage, but it is a bit random. Uh, all in all, I feel, especially with uh, physical meta coming, um, and for us, uh, we have a lot of spell users, she is probably the one that I'm most interested, or least interested overall. Uh, she does have uh, MP down and spell damage up with her first one. Second is first resistance, fourth is whoosh, and then she has uh, Bakrasu and Big Bang. Big Bang does do a lot of damage, but the main issue is you've got to wait a couple turns before you can use it. Not nearly as useful as some other units. Um, personally, I'm the least interested in her myself, but I know there's others that like it because of the Doze Storm and Tenma Collapse, and I totally understand that. Uh, it's just, I have, most of my units are based off of this, and I'm looking for something that could uh, help my team as well. 
Uh, the last one's Deborah. This one I think I'm going to go with um, Sis Damager increases physical damage by 10%. A very good leadership effect. Um, her first dupe is a move plus one as well. Very, very like these uh, types. Her skill, first skill is 160 Sis physical damage AoE. That's a straight line. Tiger Claw deals 96% uh, physical damage three times. Uh, by far my least favorite one, but it's her non-elemental skill, so at least she does have a non-elemental skill. And do remember, Deborah's great weakness is that she does not have the ability to learn a new skill. And also, Deborah, her uh, finish move is uh, Gotchery Mode. It is not an attack. It does do healing and some buffing. It is a very interesting skill, um, but it is not a high damage skill like Elena's was. Uh, but I didn't get Elena, and so I'm still debating on which one I'm looking for, but we'll see for that. Uh, she is probably the weakest overall out of the three, but for my team, it's something that I am missing a lot of, and I'm still kind of debating on whether or not to uh, grab her. I probably won't decide for at least another week and a half anyways, and we'll have to kind of see what units I do get uh, more because of uh, both Deborah and Bianca. You really want her their first awakening skill, and if I get Bianca, luckily, and not uh, Deborah, then I'll be okay with uh, taking Bianca instead as my uh, dupe if I don't get the extras. Uh, the last one is the Gorgeous Dance Fight. A very powerful uh, ring around her. 280% cis physical damage to AoE. Units within the AoE. Very, very powerful. Very nice units. Alright, and the last unit, who's going to be on a separate banner later on, is Midrath. He is a boss unit, unlike the others, which were hero units. A very interesting unit, a very good tank. Uh, leadership, though, is pretty specialized with breathing power frizz, so breath attacks uh, by 20%. <coughs> Sorry. First skill is Breath of Magic Flame, inflicts frizz, breath damage, and AoE. Rarely lowers speed. Kind of an interesting debuff, but not nearly as useful as a lot of others. Um, his second skill, and notice once again, more breath damage. So his ability to damage is totally based on his level. Uh, so this is why we considered him a tank because of his last skill. But uh, Purgatory Fireball inflicts for Frizz breath damage. Uh, both of these skills are very, very high. Uh, the last one, though, Makai Fog, is a very interesting skill. Very large AoE. Greatly reduces the attack power and skill level of all enemies with an AoE with very high probability. So he debuffs greatly with this skill, and this is the important part. Uh, he has very high HP and defense along with it, so he makes it a very, very good tank especially against bosses. The only problem is is he is he needs levels in order to do a lot of damage, but if you're using tanks, those levels are important for HP and defense anyways to absorb more blows, but he can't cover like tanks. So it's he's more of a trap the unit, force them to attack him only and then have the rest of the units kind of send around. So he can tank, but against like big EX battles, it's not nearly as nice as the selflessness tanks that we have. First skill, Flame Ball, increases all the breath damage skills and lowers breath MP consumption. Second is Zap Resistance, fourth is Bang Resistance, and the third and fifth is the Purgatory Fireball uh, skill up. The Mekai Fog is more just to try to increase the skill over there. So that's, it's an interesting one. This one is not the third skill, but the second skill instead. Okay, so our A units. Uh, the Blizzard Hawk is for the uh, Brides. 
it is a pretty um, ho-hum unit except for the fact that it can heal uh, it does have four movement and pretty high agility so if you do pull the blizzard hawk uh, the condor it's similar to the b level condor uh, can s occasionally sleep and has a ice breath damage as well but the big here is that um, but the big deal here is that there is a can rarely stop with the ice bird breath so it does have the ability to do some pretty interesting arena debuffs but from an A unit I think you'd expect more especially with the poor HP um, overall it has okay attack but I don't know that you're actually going to really get to use it very much and the wisdom itself this is as high as I would like I kind of wish they switched to wisdom and the attack around um, instead second unit though golden golem it's a more interesting unit uh, can stun with both its first and third skill its attack is very high it does move four uh, it has pretty good HP and defense as well its agility isn't as high as some of the other uh, four movement units there but very very good survivability compared to the rest so it might not be able to move first but if you can get stuns to land it is a very interesting arena unit especially for an a level um, and it is ranked pretty high for that all right for the farmable units we do have two gans and johnny um first one is uh recruitable more on the bobble uh tower uh 25th level um has three decent skills uh, all in all for a free unit it's a pretty good damage dealer uh, that you can uh, get to five hearts Ragnar was better but I do like click uh, the second one here can occasionally lower defense uh, this is a fairly useful overall uh, Johnny is a very interesting unit as well you get this up a very hard demons tower uh, can move behind units to cause small physical damage uh, but it is a magic and will do some uh, interesting skills but um, it's an okay unit uh, but it's something farmable it is the first real mage attack user that we have so I would just go ahead and do that uh, the other farmable units are here um, these we'll, we'll use for CP and uh, for the battle roads. Nothing too super interesting here overall. Uh, no, there's there's nothing that's really really interesting out of all of these. Uh, so let's move on to the uh, Dragon Quest Five items. We have the Demon King Stagger. Uh, this is uh, obviously from Midrath. Uh, we have, uh, this one is got some agility, uh, it's frizz breath, so try to increase the damage overall, uh, with the purgatory fireball as well. The second one is princess robe, uh, this is a boss battle, very, very good armor, we are desperately need more armors and not weapons, so something to really look forward for. Uh, the other three are uh, chapter one, two, and three, uh, last battles for each of those chapters. Uh, the walking stick is uh, good for bang spells. Uh, the Yosaikin is great for zap physical power, and shiny nails is great for Sis Fizz. Obviously, they're each for our brides. Um, so, all in all, these are fairly easy to farm. The princess robe is just for the boss battle. That one you won't be able to farm very much. But uh, the rest of these are farmable. Uh, fairly easy to uh, straightforward. Just uh, go to the end levels for chapters 1, 2, 3, and 5 uh, to farm is what you want. Obviously, the harder and very hard are a better chance to get drops as well. For the trade-in, 
there's nothing uh, super uh, unique about these trade-ins. We've uh, done this before. We, uh, by the end of the event, there will be 10 tickets each for the four units, Bianca, Flora, Deborah, and Midrath. Um, uh, there will be 30 hero fragments, which will be nice. Uh, we should be building up to uh, having enough for a full hero at this point. Kari Breath is the uh, big scale here. And obviously the iridescent orb is uh, the other, these are the main ones that you should be targeting. Uh, you can do all of the uh, weapons as well, but generally it's more convenient and better to farm using your stamina than the sheets uh, for weapons. So the bobble tower and DQ5, there are 25 levels, uh, each floor will feature one monster to recruit out of all of them, except for floors 5 and 10. Uh, the goal is to defeat 1,500 enemies total, but um, the, for casual players and for the effort to uh, effort reward, 500 is the goal to get the iridescent orb. Uh, a lot of these monsters are slime knights. Uh, but there will be, as I say, one featured for each of the levels. Um, you're gonna, if you're farming for uh, the recruitable units, you're gonna be basically farming 21 or 19 through 25, I believe, or uh, doing the math in my head, I think it's 19 through 25. You also earn medals for winning each battle, uh, and going through this as well uh, will give you. Uh, some ability to fight in the big boss battle, which I talked about earlier. Uh, the battle roads here, it's just one. Uh, Jami is the one. Jami is the horse. Uh, so you are going to want to make sure that you get that fairly quickly so that you can start upgrading all the units. There are four old units here down below. Uh, so you have chapter 12-4 for... Sabercat, uh, but that also has its own story. You should have that already. Uh, and the rest of these are fairly common, uh, but uh, you can also get uh, a lot of Slime Knights in the tower if you haven't uh, gotten it to five hearts. Um, on the other two, you have to go through story. Uh, the Orc here is very common in a lot of story events, and uh, Armor Knight here is a uh, best to farm in chapter 12-2. Uh, the others are uh, basically the monsters that you can recruit. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, and so um, this is uh, what you've got there. So Jami is recruitable. Uh, Hawk here is, uh, let me just be more specific, uh, Blizzard Hawk is a a level that you, is through gotcha and these units here the B C and D are farmable now if you uh, get through all this and get the water ring you can select one of the three brides at the end of this um, it is wise to hold on to this uh, until I wouldn't say the very end but nearly the end uh, and choose either uh, one that will get you to a plus one movement or someone that you really need in your party. Uh, we can talk, we'll talk about that more later, but you can choose one of the three brides at the end as long as you uh, do enough of the quest to get the water ring. Uh, so there is definitely a good reason to go throughout the event here. Uh, unlike some of the previous events we've had, this one is jam-packed with stuff to do. Uh, there will be some boss battles as well that we'll have to go through. Uh, I'll cover that in more detail as well. This video has gone on way too long, so I'm going to cut it off here for now. I hope you guys enjoy. Please like and subscribe. You can also catch me live on twitch.tv slash and I have a Patreon as well. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this event. This event is actually going to be very busy, uh, so there will be a lot of stuff to do. Uh, make sure, too, that each in the next couple of days that you do enough of the events to be able to get the tickets, the 
that is very, very important. It gives you a better chance of potentially getting these. And I do hope that um, you guys get lucky and get uh, the units that you're looking for. Uh, this is going to be a pretty fun event, pretty lengthy event. And uh, this event actually did give a decent amount of rewards overall, so you were able to do a couple of pulls if you so chose as well. Uh, just because there were 25 um, levels in the Bobble Tower, and there were uh, five chapters as well to go through. So there was a lot of uh, small rewards that do add up at the very end. So I hope you guys enjoy. Good luck, and I will see you guys around.